Mr. Jones. Mr. Moderator, I'd note that the state legislature had just passed a law which we're apparently putting into effect, which says that the laws that we're proposing for zoning don't have to actually be on the warrant. So the voters do not have on their ballot the actual wording of the, of the uh, law being proposed. And this is an example of the confusion that reigns. We see up on the screen one paragraph. But if we look at the referring document, which that paragraph doesn't even reference, that there is a referring document for the voters to consider, you would think that was the entire law. But it isn't the law at all. It's intended only to be a summary of the law. Mr. Mr. Uh, Arthur, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot your name at the moment, but uh, he points out that uh, he, he, he reads the, the actual document and he reads it differently than the planning board reads it. Yet the voter is going to go into the booth and see merely that paragraph. He's not going to see the law that he's approving or disapproving. I mean, this is creating a certain degree of opaqueness, I think, is very detrimental to our government. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Uh, Mr. Jones's point well taken. I, I believe there's a requirement that that um, zoning ordinance appear in its entirety posted at the um, polling place, but it will not be on the actual ballot. So uh, if you're a voter, you need to look for that as you come in. If you haven't examined it before March 11th to look and read the entire text, because there's certainly uh, we've heard a difference of opinion as to what the uh, proposal uh, portends to do. During the last session, the state legislature listened to a, a hearing, had work sessions, executive sessions, and then the whole House and then the whole Senate did the same thing to pass a rule that would make it easier for the voters to understand these articles. I think those who have lived here in the town of Hampton for more than a year or two will agree that a few years ago we had some warrant, ar some warrant articles that were pages and pages long that did nothing but take up time and people never read them. It turned them off. Now what we're trying to do is allow people to know the sense of that article and if they want to go in and look at the details, it must be posted. Many people are more graphically oriented than word oriented and so they are able to do that. And the objections that this is illegal, that's preposterous. You know, that's, that's grabbing for straws. This thing is very legal, it is an accommodation to future growth, and it's something that we need to do if we're not going to go back and revert to the Stone Age. Let's support the articles that are put forth by the people we elected to do this job, and not the people who want to come here and take pot shots at it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Mr. Jones, Ms. Wilson, yeah, Mr. Jones, and then we'll wrap up with Ms. Uh, Wilson. <coughs> We just heard the previous presenter, our state representative, Fred Rice, speak to absurdities, so I wanted to speak to the absurdities that we just heard. We just heard that the state legislature, never abusing us, never inducing us to subsidize their activities here in their state park. No, no, the great state legislature, never abusive of our rights. No, 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 no. They, in their infinite, and I do mean infinite wisdom, have determined, yes, there is a point. In their infinite wisdom have said that it's easier for the public to remain ignorant. That we shouldn't put the law on the ballot. This is wise, yes, this way the, the voter is easier to make a decision because he's ignorant as to what the law says. And no, State Representative Rice, we are not taking pot shots to an elected body. I remind you, if you wish to read the state laws, which I don't think you do it often enough, this is a legislative body right here. This is the legislature of the town. And he's advocating that this legislature not read the law. Can anything be more absurd than that? Now, on this Article 5 in particular, we've heard at the planning board that there have been, what, flaws? And then they say, well, it's okay to do the flaws because, well, nothing's perfect. 
Well, I don't think anyone's asking for perfection, but I think we ought to correct flaws when they're identified and not simply ignore them. None other than our town attorney send, sends a confidential letter indicating the flaws. But are we allowed to know what those flaws are? No, no, no. It's a secret. It's a confidential letter. We, the legislative body, the town meeting in this session, and the one where we sometimes call an election, but it's actually the second session of the town legislature, are told, no, no, you are not allowed to know the flaws. You're not allowed to readily read the law. You are expected to be ignorant, conform, and vote yes, because we have a planning board that says, yes, the flaws are good. Vote no. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Eventually. And I think, I think all of us have been repulsed in recent years when we see our U.S. Congress passing laws upon us that they don't, not only don't understand, don't even try to understand, they don't read them. Articles 2 through 7 are doing just that. I've managed to read some of the reference documents that purport to be the law on 2 through 7. You'll notice that Article 2 is basically a correction of a flawed law that the planning board put forth just a couple of years ago. Mr. Jones? I don't see any particular Jones, problem with that. Mr. I am Jones, speaking to the point. No, Mr. Jones, I've got to get you on Article 7. I'm you made that. an eloquent point relative I, to the, getting the theory, but seven. I need you on Article 7. But as I was saying, the, the overall theme of what's being put forth by the planning board is, is really a series of flaws here. And this particular article is very repulsive to good government. And it says it right even in the summary. Let us divide the town. Let us divide the town by treating businesses different than residents. Let's take more of the property from one and not so much of the property from another. Divide and conquer. Create division. We have other articles on this warrant that are doing similar things, and I'll speak to that when, when the time's appropriate. But this is just bad government. We should be speaking to things that, if this is a town-wide issue, then the entire town should be serving to the solution equally. We shouldn't be putting more of an onus on one and less on another because one has more political influence than another in the process. No, no, no. This is not good government. I'd say vote no on Articles 3 through 7. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Jones.